can use SoundForge to isolate and correct very small problems in your waveforms that translate to huge problems in your ears. We will use several different techniques to fix various glitches and problems with your audio files like clicks, crackles, pops, and other undesirable noises that find their way into your digitized files. For our discussion, we will use a file digitized off of an old vinyl record. Close any open data windows and open the file SpanishVinyl.Wav. Play the file. It has lots of crackling and some very pronounced clicks caused by scratches in the record. Although it's not realistic to think that you can turn this into a perfectly pristine digital recording, you can clean up many of the worst problems with a variety of SoundForge tools and techniques. Let's start with something you already know how to do. Before the music starts, you hear a couple of very loud clicks or pops in the recording. You can hear them clearly in the file and see them just as clearly in the waveform. You might need to zoom in a bit to see the one that exists just before the music starts. Make a selection that includes these pops and press the delete key on your keyboard to remove them. While this deletion was the perfect solution for that problem, the technique will not always work. Notice that another pop happens during the silence right after the bass introduction and before the guitar comes in. Zoom in on that pop, but not so far that you can't see some of the waveform on either side of it. Make a selection that includes the waveform for the pop. Press Ctrl K to listen without the selection. You can hear that while you can simply delete the selected audio, you'd mess up the timing of the music, so deletion doesn't work here. Instead, let's mute the audio. Choose Process, Mute. The mute process has gotten rid of any sound in the selected area without removing any time from your file. The mute process worked great in this situation, but you can probably see that it cannot work in every situation. Zoom all the way out and notice that you can see several pops and clicks in the waveform that occur simultaneously with material you don't want to lose. Let's take a closer look at the large click in the first phrase of the introduction. Place your cursor on that click and zoom in. As you zoom in, you realize that you can't mute this click without also muting some of the music that happens simultaneously. Just for a moment, zoom all the way back out. Notice the pencil tool icon in the button bar. At the current zoom level, you can't access this tool. Keep an eye on the pencil tool button and zoom back in. Eventually, you see that the button becomes accessible to you. With the pencil tool, you can literally draw your own waveforms. Zoom in far enough that you can plainly see the waveform for the click. Notice that the wave has a smooth curve to it until suddenly it becomes erratic and jagged, then spikes suddenly, becomes jagged again, and finally smooths out once again. Click the Pencil Tool button and draw a nice smooth curve in place of the jaggedness in the spike. You've just drawn a new and improved waveform. Zoom all the way out. Place your cursor just in the left channel and listen to your edit. Now listen to the right channel to compare your fix to the original click. While the pencil tool is extremely powerful and very useful in certain situations, it's not always totally accurate because you're guessing at what the section of the waveform should look like. Besides, it would take a long time to get through the entire file like this, so let's let the software help us work faster. Let's fix the corresponding glitch in the right channel as long as we're here. Click the right channel somewhere before the glitch waveform. Choose Tools, Find. In the Find dialog, choose Large Glitch Finder from the preset dropdown and click OK. SoundForge searches through the file until it finds the first large glitch and places the cursor there. Now that you've automatically found the glitch, make a selection over the area that looks like the entire glitch. Remember, make the selection only in the channel with the glitch. Choose Tools, Repair to see a cascading menu with three different options. Let's say you're happy with the manual repairs you made to the glitch on the left channel. Choose Copy Other Channel. This copies the corresponding data from the opposite channel and replaces the glitch in this channel with that data. Play your file and listen to the results. If the glitch is a mono file, or the other channel is glitched too, copying from one channel to the other won't work. Click to place your cursor in both channels and run the Find tool to find the next glitch. Choose Tools, Repair, Interpolate. You probably see the waveform for the glitch change, but the problem may not be solved. Click Undo. Now, make a selection over what you think is the entire glitch and choose Tools, Repair, Interpolate again. This results in a more effective repair. The Interpolate command basically behaves like an automated pencil tool. It connects the dots to make the repair. 
It connects the sample at the beginning of the selection to the sample at the end of the selection. Listen to the results now. Find the next glitch. Choose Tools, Repair, Replace. With this option, SoundForge copies a 15 millisecond range of data surrounding the cursor and replaces it with the data that occurred just before the cursor location. SoundForge crossfades the edge of the repaired data to make a smooth repair. If your glitch is wider than 15 milliseconds, make a selection over the glitch first. In that case, SoundForge replaces the selected area. Each of the three repair techniques has its place, and you'll find that where one may not give you the results you want, one of the others most likely will. This file still has glitches and a lot of surface noise. While you could use the find and repair techniques we've discussed here over the entire file, that's still a lot of repetitive work. Further, these techniques do nothing to address the surface noise. They're really best for the occasional glitch that needs fixing. SoundForge provides another tool that really works well for a file like this one that has multiple glitches and a lot of crackly surface noise. Choose Tools, Audio Restoration. Here, we can apply a click removal setting to the entire file while at the same time running a noise reduction filter to address the surface noise. From the preset dropdown, choose General Restoration. This sets the click removal amount at 12. Click the preview button and listen to how well this tool has removed the clicks. Select the Bypass checkbox to remind yourself of how bad the glitches were. Deselect the Bypass checkbox. A lot of surface noise still exists. You can get rid of most of it, but keep in mind that now you need to make some decisions on what you're willing to accept in surface noise as opposed to what you're willing to give up in terms of the fidelity of the material you want to keep. The remaining controls in the dialog deal with consistent noise, like an air conditioner humming in the background during a live recording, noise from a digital video camera recorded to the audio portion of the videotape, turntable hum, and to some extent, this surface noise. You can experiment with all of these settings, but for now let's work with the noise floor setting. Preview the file again and adjust the noise floor slider to the right. Notice that the further you go, the more noise you eliminate, but simultaneously the more desirable audio you eliminate from the recording, particularly at the high frequencies. Pay particular attention to the lead guitar and notice how it loses some of its high-end character as you raise the noise floor. In the range of about minus 70 dB, you can hear that you've really eliminated a great deal of the surface noise. Unfortunately, at about the same range, the loss in high-end fidelity also becomes quite apparent. It's for you to determine your comfort level in this trade-off. When you get a chance to experiment more with this dialog, try different settings of not only the noise floor, but also the reduced noise by and the effect frequencies above settings. For instance, try a lower noise floor with a higher reduced noise by setting. Try raising the affected frequency setting. By playing each of these settings off against one another, you may be able to find the perfect combination that eliminates the most noise from your material while preserving the maximum fidelity. For now, choose General Restoration from the preset drop-down list again and click OK. You see the waveform for the file change in reaction to the audio restoration you've just completed.